Hello floss tube friends. Welcome to Sarah Stitchery. I'm Sarah and this is my channel where I talk all about my cross stitch journey. Today is floss tube episode number nine and it is April Fool's Day. So happy April Fool's Day. No uh, pranks or tricks here. Just a lot of good stitchy updates for you today. <laughs> uh, first of all, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you see here and that uh, whether you're new or returning that you will consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. Um, first of all, before we get started, let me stop and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who left such kind comments on my last video. Um, I had put a little public service announcement at the last, at the end of my last video, um, just reminding people to be kind and nice. Um, you know, I had had a couple of comments, um, one recently and, and one a while back that were not very nice about my appearance. And I just reminded people, let's be nice and kind. And, um, you guys just completely, uh, showered me with love and kindness and support, support and encouragement. And I am just completely overwhelmed in a positive way by that. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I certainly wasn't um, fishing for compliments or anything. I was just kind of putting it out there because it had been something that had bothered me. And um, and you guys just came out full force with uh, such kindness. And I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I did receive a lot of comments. I'm still reading the comments um, and uh, responding to them. So I try to set aside a little bit of time each day to, to read the comments. I mean, just because there's so many. Um, and I want to make sure that I give each comment the time um, and the appreciation it deserves because you guys take the time out of your day to not only watch me, but leave those comments. So thank you. So if I haven't responded to your comment yet or um, or hearted it yet, I just haven't read it yet and I'm getting to it, um, but I will. It's just been, just been so kind and it just means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much. Um, let's see, what, I've, what have I been up to? So it hasn't been quite two weeks yet since my last regular uh, floss tube update, but um, this is actually the last day of my spring break. And so I figured why not sit down today and do a video when you're feeling relaxed, when you have time. And um, I feel like I have enough stuff for a video today. So let's just do this, right? So I figured, let me come on here and just make a video. Um, so not much for like personal update. I have been doing a lot of like stitchy related stuff, which I'll talk about, um, as the video goes along, but nothing, not really anything in the personal realm. Um, my husband and I were both on spring break this week. We are both teachers, uh, here in Southern, Southwestern Ohio. Um, and we just kind of relaxed. We just hung out, um, you know, just enjoyed being off and not having to deal with all the hustle and bustle of daily life. So it's been really nice. <laughs> um, one cool thing that I did over my spring break, which you, you may have seen, is um, I filmed a video with my friend, Sarah. Uh, my friend, Sarah, is also known in the floss tube world and on Instagram as Handmade by Sarah W., um, you may have seen her channel. You may have seen her on Instagram. She's a very dear friend of mine. We don't live near each other. I live in Ohio. She lives in Alabama, but she and I talk every day and we stitch together and we talk about what we're stitching. We plan what we're going to stitch together and we're like, we should do a video together. Now, all that to say, our videos together, because we plan on doing more because it was so much fun. Um, our videos together will not be replacing our personal channels. I'm still going to be here on Sarah's Stitchery. She's still going to be over there on Handmade by Sarah W. But we just thought it'd be fun to get together every so often and just kind of film um, kind of an update on what we're up to. And especially because she and I stitched so many things together, why don't we just talk about it and show it together, right? So um, if you haven't had a chance to go watch that video, I would definitely encourage you to go check it out. It was a fun time. Um, 
it, the video is on my channel, here on my channel, and you can find the same video over at Sarah's channel, Handmade by Sarah W. So you can watch it in either place. You don't have to watch it twice, but you can watch it on whatever channel you want to watch it on. Um, but we had so much fun and we would love to hear your feedback, to hear what you thought about the video, um, hear any suggestions you might have for us. You know, this is, this is new for us filming in two different places at the same time. Um, but we had a really fun time. So I hope you'll check it out. I hope you'll check her channel out too. She is an amazing stitcher. Um, and uh, one fun thing about our friendship is that even though we like to stitch a lot of the same things, I'm a linen stitcher and she's an Ada stitcher. And so, you know, I know that there are a lot of linen stitchers here in the community. There are a lot of Ada stitchers. And so I know what it's like to, to find those people, you know, on FlossTube and on Instagram who are kind of like have the same vibe or, or like to stitch on the same things or stitch the same designers as you. And so like, um, you know, I know a lot of people appreciate, uh, Sarah, um, you know, showing her beautiful stitches on Ada because you can stitch things that are just as beautiful on Ada as you can stitch on linen. It's all about personal preference. And I think, I think Sarah's stitching really shows that. And so, um, definitely check her out, whether you're an Ada stitcher or not, definitely check her out. <laughs> anyway, there's my plug for Sarah. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, talk about, my finishes. I have three finishes to show you today. One finish I actually showed on that video with Sarah because uh, Sarah and I both had a big reveal. We had both recently finished a big stitch that we had in our um, in our whip rotations. And um, even though it wasn't the same um, stitch, uh, we we both encouraged each other to keep going and to get a finish. And so it was really cool because we both had a, a big finish around the same time. So um, she showed her Jane Hopkins from Hands Across the Sea. So you should definitely go check that out on her channel and uh, or on our video. <laughs> and I finished, and if you've been around here for a while, you've seen this many times. I finished Let Love Rain by Teresa Coquit. It is so it's so good, so good. Teresa's designs are fantastic and this one in particular is just a masterpiece. I had so much fun stitching this. Um, it is uh, mostly charted in DMC. I did stitch mine in all DMC. I changed the blue to 924. I changed the green to 469. And I kept forgetting to mention this, but the really dark brown that you see here, um, I think it's charted as Onyx. Um, is Onyx Weeks Dye Works, I think? Um, I changed it to uh, DMC 3371. So, and I think the rest is all called for DMC. So that's how mine turned out. I stitched this on a 46 count, um, fox and rabbit fabric in the color prehistoric. So it's kind of like a bluish gray uh, toned fabric. But I think that just turned out spectacular. I'll just kind of come in close and kind of go up and let you take a look at it there. I put the year that my husband and I were married. And there it is. So I'm definitely going to get this um, professionally framed. Um, I've never had anything professionally framed. I've never really stitched anything that I thought was special enough to warrant a professional framing job, but now I have. So I'm definitely going to take this. I'm thinking I'm going to take it up to Craft Gallery. Um, I believe that's where Pam and Steph get their things uh, framed. Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching. You may have heard of them. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's where they get their things framed and their framing, uh, their framed pieces are always lovely. So that's where I'm going to take mine. So I need to, uh, I need to plan a day to go drop this bad boy off. Let me sit this over here. Okay. All right. And then I had two little finishes. So this one right here, this teeny tiny little design, 
uh, was actually a freebie. Um, I got it on, I found it on Instagram. I follow a, an account on Instagram called, um, what is it? I have it right here. Uh, Rhonda's Originals on Instagram. And this was a little freebie that she put out recently called Robin Eggs in Nest. And you can go to her Instagram and I, I'll put a link below too. You can go to her Instagram and go to her link tree and get this cute little pattern. Um, and I'll actually show you, I mean, it's a freebie, but I'll actually show you. It comes in four different versions here, um, two color, two black and white. And I like this because you have like the simple version and then you have the version down here that I stitched. It's a little more, a little more uh, involved, but it's, it was a very, very quick stitch. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of stitched that up real quick and then turned it into this teeny tiny little pillow. I had this fabric and stash and I used some lady dot um, pom pom trim that I just sewed on and I think it's the cutest little addition to my dough bowl. So that was a quick start finish and FFO. Let's sit that over here. And then I also, um, so I had pulled this out because I am doing this thing called 24 finishes in 2024. Um, I don't know if I made it up or if other people are doing it, but I decided uh, in at the beginning of 2024 that I wanted to lower my whip count. Um, I started out the year with 80 some whips and I was like, I need to get some of these whips off my list. And I love all my whips. I've actually gone through several times and just kind of weeded some things out because I had more than 80 something. Um, and so I really love all of my whips and I want to get to them. And so I just kind of wanted to give myself a way to focus on getting some things done. And so um, Let Love Rain was one of my 24 and 24 finishes. Uh, and the idea was to, to work on things that were whips prior to 2024. Um, you know, because it's easy to start new things and get excited and finish those. But some of those things that you haven't seen in a while can linger for a while. So I decided it'd be a great way to just kind of pull out some of the, my older stuff and get it done. So I do want to try to get a mix of like big things like Let Love Rain, but also some medium size and some smaller stuff um, off of my whip list. And so after my big, huge Let Love Rain finish, I was like, I need to pull out one of my small whips and get that done. Um, and kind of my goal is to do six six whips, um, six prior whips per quarter. Uh, so every three months getting six whips off my list and finished. And so um, I got my six. In fact, I'm going to go through my list here in just a minute of which six I finished in the first quarter and I'll put in pictures. Um, but I went, I decided to go ahead now that we're in a new month, I decided to go ahead and let's just go ahead and get a head start on um, my next six for this next quarter of the year. And so um, a couple days ago, I pulled this one out. Here's my next finish. Uh, this was a whip of mine from 2022. This pattern is called Blanket Flower by the Blue Flower. Um, you may remember a couple of years ago during Needlework Expo, they did this um, collaboration called X Stitch the Rainbow. Um, in fact, here. X Stitch the Rainbow, where Cottage Garden Threads um, put together a uh, color palette and a bunch of designers designed um, patterns around a common theme. So for this first one, the, the theme was Autumn Garden. And these were the four colors that were, um, that were put out by Cottage Garden Threads and the designers all designed patterns using these four colors. And it was like a bunch of different like fall themed um, little stitches. And so this one was actually a freebie um, from the Blue Flower during the 2022 Needlework Expo. Um, I I got it back then. I think it came like free in an order that I did with Top Knot Stitcher. But I'm assuming since it's a freebie, you could probably get it on the Blue Flower website. I'm not sure. I haven't looked. Um, but that would be my first uh, place where I would look. But 
I decided to pull this out and give it a quick finish. I had I had the whole border, the outer border and the inner border done and two of these flowers. So I did the other two flowers and then this middle flower. And I just think it turned out so cute. It was a very fast and easy finish for me. Um, and so I just knocked another whip off my list. I finished it on the back with this pretty fabric that my friend Allison, Alley Cat 13 gave me um, in my uh, smalls exchange that I showed in my last video where she gave me that beautiful nutcracker. Um, if you didn't see that, go back to my last uh, regular video. But she put this uh, fabric in there as a little extra freebie or an extra gift for me. And then I put this uh, lady dot pom-pom trim around the edges. And I think it's just the cutest little dough bowl filler. I'll probably save it and put it out in like my fall display because I feel like the colors are very fall. So those were my finishes and fully finishes. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I'm doing that 24 finishes in 24. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of do a, look, a quick little wrap up of my first six um, 24 and 24 finishes uh, for the year. So um, I don't have them with me because some of them are like seasonal and they're down in my basement and I didn't feel like going and digging them out. But um, I figure I'll just put in pictures for you. So uh, the first one that I finished, this was actually a start. I think I started it in December of 2023. So it's like a very last minute uh, start before the new year. I had um, started Snow Magical by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I fully finished, or I finished stitching that and fully finished stitching it in January. After that, I finished uh, the 2023 Collector's Heart by Heart and Hand. And, um, and I also had that fully finished as well. So that was my second 24 and 24 finishes. Um, after that, I finished Winter Cometh by Summer House Stitch Works. Love that one. I need to do the other three seasons. Then after that, I finished Frosty's Valentine, and that was by Annie B's Folk Art. Very cute. And then after that, I finished um, I finished this little cutie, Love to Stitch Squared. It was designed by my friend Allison of AZ Family Zoo. And then of course, my sixth finish for that first quarter of the year was Let Love Rain. So I reached my goal of having six previous uh finished previous whips finished in 2024 and now I've already got a start on my next six with blanket flower from the blue flower the one the little pillow I just showed you so I thought it'd be fun before I show you any of my whips today to kind of um show you what my plans are as far as uh my next five because I've got one done already my next five finishes um uh, for my 24 and 24 that I have planned for this next uh, three months. So let me start with this one. This is actually very timely, this one that I pulled out. Um, let me show it to you first and then I'll explain. So I pulled out um, Hands-On Design Mad for Plaid and you'll see it comes with all four seasons. I had started spring. And I just had the smallest start on it. So I was like, why not pull that out and finish that? So let me show you the start I have. Like I said, it's a very small start. I am stitching this on the called for um, fabric. It's 32 count slate by Fabrics by Stephanie. And that was my start. Um, stitching it with the called for Cosmo Floss. So I'm like, let me just pull that out and finish it. Um, because I already had purchased last year, I had purchased the uh, board it goes on. It's called On the Edge. You get it from Chantel's 141 Design Company. You can see a picture of it there, fully finished. And um, you'll see in the picture that it's kind of finished like a flat, um, a flat finish, and it's like uh, attached to the back of the design board. And then you have this cute little like drawer thing in the front where you put little things. Um, I was actually watching Chantel's vlog last night and she decided to put a little different twist on this finish. So she went ahead and um, stitched these up and turned them into pillows that she then like tucked into 
this little uh, display piece and she put some like little greenery in there. And then she had this little charm pack of like these wooden um, pieces that went in as a little accent. So like for instance, for the winter one, she had, um, it wasn't this, but a wooden um, snowflake that she painted and like tucked in there as like a little accent for her display. And it was so cute. So I'm totally going to copy Chantel and do my finish just like hers. I thought it was very versatile um, and easy to switch out because you're not like attaching anything. Um, you're just like tucking it all in there and you've got a cute little display. So I'm gonna do that. So that's gonna be one of my 24 finishes in 24. Um, I also decided to pull out, I was inspired by my friend, Handmade by Sarah W. This was a recent finish for her and fully finish. And I was like, you know, I've got that as a whip. Why don't I just pull it out and work on it and finish it too? So she had finished Cardinal Kin. I think she actually showed that fully finished in her, I don't think it was her most recent video, but maybe the one before that. So this is by Plum Street Samplers. And I'm gonna stitch the uh, more colorful version. There's another version up here that's like a little more muted. Um, and I just have a small start, but it's a small, it's a small stitch, so it won't take me very long. Um, but that's all I've got so far. I have no idea what this fabric is. I don't have it written down. Um, I'm assuming it's probably a 40 count, um, just cause that's, how I, that's what I stitch on mostly. And, um, it looks like I'm using, looks like I'm using the call for, um, DMCs and Weeks Dye Works, so. I figured that'd be a quick, easy finish to do. So that's another one. Another one I wanna focus on finishing. I love this one. This is a pattern from a designer. Um, not sure how to say this. I know somebody recently told me the correct pronunciation and of course I can't remember because I can only remember the incorrect pronunciation. Crochet a go-go. That's not how you say that, but that's the designer. <laughs> and the pattern is called the little dog. And look at that little dog. It's so cute. Um, so I started stitching this, oh, it was a while back. A year, year and a half ago, I don't know. Um, but I decided that I wanted my little dog to look like my little dog, Daisy. That was before I have my other little dog, Lily. Um, but I changed the colors to make it look like Miss Daisy. And I think it's so cute. I may have to stitch it again because that dog's colors are kind of like my Lily. But she's kind of, she's furrier. I might have, might have to make him look a little bushier. I don't know. Or find a different dog pattern. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, that will be a quick, easy one to finish. Uh, it's very sweet. Um, again, I'm not even sure what fabric this is. I don't even think I have it written down in here. Um, but yeah, I figured that would be a quick, easy one to finish as well. Like I said, I wanna pull out some quick and easy ones, but also kind of get some progress on some bigger ones as well. Not progress, get a finish on some bigger ones as well. So let me put that back in there. All right, so those were, that was three. And so I've got two more, cause like I said, I already had that blanket flower finished. Another one that I would really like to finish here in the next three months is Scissor Sampler by Talon Emblem. I love this one so much. If I remember correctly, I think Bridget, the museum stitcher, she had finished this a while back and her finish was amazing. Here's mine. Oh, here's mine. I am stitching mine on, four, nope, this is 36 count um, x Design in the color Rocky Mountain. And I'm actually using two strands of floss on 36. I mostly always stitch with one strand, but I really wanted these colors to be really, really dense. And so, you know, cause those colors just pop, you know, on that, on that pattern, on the picture. And so I wanted them to be really like in your face. 
And so I'm using two strands instead of one on this 36 count. And I totally think that I can get that finished. So I'm gonna pull that out and work on a finish. And then the final one that I'm gonna focus on for this quarter is this pattern by JBW Designs called Bluebirds of Happiness. I got this pattern at um, the Stitch Away Retreat that was hosted by Keepsakes um, in 2022. It was the, the exclusive design. It is readily available to everybody at this point. Um, but here's where I'm at. Sorry, I didn't iron any of these. But this is stitched on 40 count freeze by Atomic Ranch using all the called for colors. So I would say that's like halfway. Here's the, the length of it. Here's the width of it. And so it looks like I'm about halfway on that. So I, I think I could easily get a finish on that as well. So I would like to get that out of my whip rotation and on my wall as well. Very, especially like it's very pretty spring type of stitch. So that, those are my plans. That's what I'm gonna be working towards. So anyway, oh, I forgot to show you guys the shirt I'm wearing. This was a gift from a teacher at my school named Tina, very sweet. She got me this shirt. It says, just a girl who loves true crime and cross stitch. Um, I don't know where she got it. It was a gift, but I, I've seen shirts like this on Etsy. So I bet if you typed in something like true crime and cross stitch sweatshirt, you could find something like this if you're interested. Okay, let's talk about my whips. What have I been working on? What have I been stitching? Well, um, today, as I mentioned before, is April Fool's Day, and I had a new start today. So if you did watch my video with Sarah W., uh, we talked about a pattern that we've been wanting to stitch, um, and we decided that today would be the perfect day because this pattern is Tom's Foolery. It is by Hands Across the Sea, and it is such a fun and funky design. And we thought, what what better time to start it than on April Fool's Day, because there's a lot of foolery go going on in that picture. You got Tom down here in his striped pajamas. So much going on, so many colors, so much fun. So I have just the smallest start. I started it this morning, and um, here's where I'm at. So I'm stitching mine on 40 count um, fabric by Needle Bling Designs in the color Lightning. And I'm just using all of the called for DMC. This is a really easy one to kit up because you can get the, um, you can get the PDF uh, pattern as a download directly from the designer, Hands Across the Sea. And uh, there is a conversion. I think there's a Soie Delger, there's a 103 silks, and there's also DMC. So I was able to kit this up from Stash pretty easy. So there's that one. Sorry, I'm gonna take the time to put it back in the bag here real quick. Okay, um, another one is also a new start here. I started this yesterday on Easter. This is also a new start that I'm doing with my friend, Sarah, handmade by Sarah W. And we decided we wanted to start, since we had finished our big pieces, me finishing Let Love Rain, her finishing Jane Hopkins, we decided we needed another big stitch. So, enter Serenity by Teresa Kogut. This was a market release. I've seen it all over the place. It is so beautiful. And that's what it looks like. So she and I started this yesterday on Easter. Here are my colors. I have them on this really fun uh, floss dial organizer. Um, hmm. It was on Etsy. I wanna say something like Sun Art or Sun. I'm gonna butcher the name of the shop. I will put a link below. That way, if you want one of these um, floss organizers, you can get your hands on it. And it's really cool because it has a little magnet here. So you can use that to hold your needle in between uh, in between floss. So, so cute. Love those colors. 
and Sarah and I did a center start. And here's what I've got so far. So the center is that big house right there smack in the middle. So I uh, didn't get a whole lot of stitching time yesterday because it was Easter and I was spending time with my family, but that's what I got. I figured it would be really cool to do like the outline, um, you know, do the outline of the house, do the outline of the windows. That way I could set myself up for some good fill in. Um, so that's what I'm working towards is just getting the outlining done in that house. Uh, Sarah and I are both stitching this on um, Latte from Fiber on a Whim. And we are both using all of the called for Fancy Floss and DMC. The only difference is I'm stitching mine on 40 count linen. And I believe she's using, I can't remember if it's 20 or 18 count Ada. But same color fabric, same floss. It's going to be amazing. So those are my two new starts. What else have I been working on? Oh, my stitch along that I'm hosting. So, um, you may or may not know, I am hosting a stitch along for Hands On Design for her new design called Spring Folk. This is a seasonal design, so there's gonna be four of them for all four seasons. And this one just came out at market, and this is her spring design. And it is just so cute. So as I said, I'm hosting a stitch along. Um, I have seen so many people participating and stitching this along with me and um, using my hashtag. The hashtag is hashtag HOD Spring Folk and um, Spring, no, nope, HOD Spring Folk Sal. Don't forget that part. And, um, and if you are stitching along with me, make sure you're posting, uh, make sure you're tagging me, excuse me, in your posts and tag Kathy. Um, and you can tag Chantelle as well because she is the one who designed, let me get, let me grab my, she is the one who designed um, the finishing board for it. It's called um, the Folk Paddle and you can find it on Chantelle's website. And uh, this was the autumn version. Uh, I was able to stitch that. Uh, it was the exclusive for the attendees of Chantelle's 141 Pep Rally back in September. And so, um, I'm gonna be using the same paddle and just attaching them all. Um, there's magnets on the back. And so that way when I'm finished with spring, I can just pull fall right off of here and put spring on there and put that up as a display piece in my home. But let me show you what I've got so far. So I'm stitching mine on the call for. The call for is 32 count driftwood by Fabrics by Stephanie. And here's what I've got so far. It is so cute. I love the colors. Um, so there are some specialty stitches in here and the specialty stitches are stitched using um, DMC Pearl Cotton um, in uh, number 12 size. And so I am saving all of my specialty stitches and my back stitching for last. So I'm just going ahead and doing all of my cross stitching first and then going back and adding those other details. Um, so like for instance, you'll notice I had some space here in between the letters because there's some, there's some um, stitches in there using the pearl cotton and there's more up here and down here. Uh, but um, don't let the specialty stitches scare you off from this design. Kathy recently uploaded a really helpful tutorial that you can use to help you with the specialty stitches. And the stitches are friendly for both linen and Ada. Um, so don't let that hold you back from joining in. And my stitch along is not a scheduled stitch along. It's just a join in when you're ready and stitch at your own pace. So some people are still waiting for their supplies and they're gonna join in when they have, when they have the chance. Some people finished already. You can see I'm kind of somewhere in the middle there. I like to uh, pull this out um, every few days and just kind of add to it some more. And I just love how it's coming along. I love these little bunnies down here and these carrots up here. Oh my goodness gracious. So cute. And it's all charted in DMC. So it makes it very easy to kit up um, from stash. Okay, there's that. I have two more whips for you today. All right, my next one is another one that I'm stitching with Sarah W. 
Um, I told you we like to stitch a lot of the same things. And so we are stitching uh, Sarah's sewing bag from Stacy Nash Designs. Um, I mean, we're both Sarah, so we have to stitch Sarah's sewing bag, right? <laughs> um, but that's what the front of it looks like. And this, oh, and this is what the back of it looks like. So this is going to be a really, really fun finish to do to turn it into this little sewing bag. So I'm stitching mine on a 40 count salt bush fabric from Fox and Rabbit. And here's what I've got so far. So you've got that rose up here and that's gonna be the flap of the bag. So it's gonna fold over like that. So that way when you fold it over, it's gonna be right side up, but I had to stitch it upside down. And then I came down here and I'm working on that house down below. So that's my progress on that so far. Um, and it's funny because Sarah started on the house. So we like started on opposite, um, opposite ends of the design there. And then my final work in progress, my final whip is another market release. This is called Wherever There Are Birds by Teresa Kogut. I love Teresa Kogut. <laughs> I thought this design was super cute. I love that bird with a strawberry in his mouth. And so, uh, I'm stitching it with all the called for DMCs, classic color works, weeks dye works. Um, I love that like red in there. That's the strawberries. And I'm stitching it on the called for fabric. This is a 40 count uh, grandpa's sleeve from X2 Design. And that's what I've got so far. So it says, wherever there are birds, there is hope. And you can see I've got a bird head. <laughs> I love this fabric. It looks like it's been like sitting in grandpa's garage, getting all like speckles from his oil or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what grandpa's doing in his garage, but I like his fabric. Anyway, those are my whips. That's what I've been working on. So let's see. Um, I've got a little bit of haul. And then at the end of my video, I have kind of a fun segment for you. So um, as I mentioned, yesterday was Easter. And so we had a small little family gathering. Um, nothing nothing too big. My son, uh, he was here. He lives here. And his girlfriend came by. And uh, my oldest daughter came by. Um, my younger daughter lives in New York, so she wasn't able to come by. So it's just the five of us. But um, my older daughter, Kendall and my son's girlfriend, also named Kendall. They are both stitchers. And I was like, girls, bring your stitching. Let's do a video. And um, fortunately for me, they were agreeable to that. They are not, uh, they're not as like, they love cross stitching, don't get me wrong, but they're not as like crazy about it as me. So I was like, oh, they're gonna think I'm crazy. They're not gonna wanna do this video with me, but they were great sports. They sat down with me and we did a little uh, interview, a little show and tell of what they're stitching. And um, it was really fun. So I figure I'll just put it at the end of this video. Uh, that way, if you wanna check it out, you can stay tuned. And if you're like, I'm done, you can just tune out, you know, um, cause this video is getting a little bit long, but I thought it'd be fun to share, um, you know, my daughter and my uh, son's girlfriend stitching and kind of uh, a younger perspective, shall we say, in the stitching world. So. Let me do my haul first and then we'll then we'll get to that. So I just have a small bit of haul. I got a uh, an order today from uh, Kitten Stitcher. And so I had ordered a few things from her. Um, what I really went on there to order was this chart called Home Sweet Home. It was a market release. I've had my eye on it. I just love it so much. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get it because I would like to stitch it for um, Mother's Day. I would like it to be my Mother's Day start. And so I grabbed it and I also got the um, little buttons that go with it. You can see there's there's little buttons um, on the design here. So I got the buttons. You can get that directly from Kitten Stitcher. Um, it's a Shakespeare's Peddler design. And I just think it's so cute, I love it. So I'm gonna stitch that for Mother's Day. So that was primarily what I went on there to order, but you know, you can't let you can't let it travel alone. So I thought, you know what, I'll grab a couple other things while I'm there. Um, I also decided to grab this um, chart from Brenda Gervais called Tis Spring. 
I have the um, the fall one and the winter themed one because it's like a series. I have the other ones as whips in my stash. So I thought, why not just add add to it and just keep going with the seasons. So I definitely want to get this one started soon. It's very cute. And another chart that I purchased. So I'll show you first what, what's inspired it. So I had ordered, and I've shown this before, but I had ordered this um, fur market. This is little Maggie Mae from Stacy Nash's uh, Animal Cracker series. And then I showed this one in my last video when I went to Columbus with my friends for our little retreat. We went to a shop called Cross My Heart. And so they had Miss Hazel. She's also in the Animal Cracker series. So, um, you know, I had to also get little Bobbin, the mouse, and uh, order him. And then today, while I was just minding my own business on Instagram, I see that my sister, who has an Etsy shop called Pepper Pot Shop, put out a bag with a mouse on it that has strawberries on it. So I had to buy it because... Yeah, so my mouse strawberry bag is coming and that's where little Bobbin and his friends are going to live. So that means I need to start him soon. So isn't that funny how things just work out that way? So uh, if you want a mouse bag with strawberries on it, go check out Pepper Pot Shop and buy yours today. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I also grabbed a piece of fabric while I was there. This is a new fabric um, from Fiber on a Whim called Sapphire. Uh, this is actually what um, Liz Matthews' new design, I forget what it's called, but it's got like a bee, a bee skep. It's a bee themed design uh, was stitched on. Bridge and the Museum Stitcher stitched the, uh, the um, model, words. She stitched the model on this fabric and it was fantastic. And so I was like, I got to get a cut of sapphire for my stash. And so here it is. So I'm excited about that. And then, of course, while I was there, I had to grab a couple of Lady Dot Creates uh, chenille trims to, to add to my collection because I'm always using my trims for little pillow finishes. So, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I have to show you today. That was actually a lot. Um... While I was talking, I realized I forgot a couple of quick things. So I'm gonna just kind of pull a couple of things out really fast. Um, I showed you earlier that um, I'm stitching Serenity with my friend, Handmade by Sarah W. Uh, we did create a hashtag for this. So if you wanna stitch it with us, we are using the hashtag Serenity with the Sarahs. So if you're stitching it with us and you wanna use our hashtag, we would love it. I am, we are following the hashtags and it does pop up if you use the hashtag and we see it. And then also for Tom's Foolery, for Tom's Foolery, if you wanna stitch that with us, we are, <laughs> we are using the hashtag Foolery on Fools since it's April Fool's Day and we started it today. So those are the hashtags we're using. But if you stitch anything with us that we're stitching um, and you want us to see it, you could also use the hashtag uh, stitching with the Sarahs. So, um, so yeah, I forgot to add that before. So I figured I'd just go back and do that now. So hashtags, hashtags, hashtags. And I'll put all that below. I don't expect you to have to remember all that. Um, and if I ever forget to put something in the description box, because I do sometimes, just just leave me a comment below and say, hey, you forgot to put this in the description box and that'll remind me to go back and add it. Um, so anyway, like I said, I'm going to put that video segment at the end of me and my Kendalls in our discussion. Um, but right now I'm going to go ahead and sign off and say goodbye to you. And just a reminder, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do. Um, I would appreciate that so much. And um, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is different than my channel here on FlossTube. I'm Sarah Stitchery, but on Instagram, you can find me at Stitchy Sarah Reads. So I would love for you to follow me over there and interact with me there as well. So 
I think that's it for today. I hope you guys are having a great day, a great week, a great morning, great night, whatever. Whenever you're watching, I hope it's great. Um, I would love for you to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're stitching. Let me know. Um, let me know whatever you want to let me know, as long as it's nice. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to say goodbye, and I will see you later. Bye, guys. Hi, friends. Welcome to Sarah's Stitchery. As you know, I'm Sarah, and you'll notice there are a lot of us here today. So let me do some introductions. Um, if you've been here before, you've met Daisy, you've met Lily, but you haven't met these lovely ladies. Um, it's going to be easy to remember their name because they're both na they're both named Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here to my left is Kendall, my daughter, my older daughter. And this one to my right is Kendall, who is my son's girlfriend. So today's Easter, so we're all here at the house hanging out. We just had dinner. And so I thought it'd be really fun to pull these girls into the craft room and have a little sit down and chat because they are both stitchers. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> welcome girls, welcome to my channel mm -hmm. and my craft room. Um, let's talk about stitching. So um, both of you know how to stitch. Yeah. Who taught you? You. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with you, Kendall. When when did I teach you how to stitch? How old were you? Do oh you remember? God. I think I was in like I was probably like eight, seven or eight, yeah. maybe. And Maggie was a little bit younger. And I think the first things we stitched was I made a little. Um, I think Maggie made a butterfly. I don't remember what I made, and then we put them in a little box, mm -hmm. and they were really cute. So yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> Did you have fun when I taught you the first time or were you? Yeah, like, it was awesome. I really liked it. And yeah. I, I can't find my box anymore though. So <laughs> but yeah, no, it was really cool. It was so special. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was. Yeah. No. And how about you, Kendall? When did I teach you? Well, uh, 2022. Yeah, that's when I started dating Jude and then mm -hmm. I started going over to your house and then... You and I taught, pressured you. <laughs> kind of slowly introduced me into cross stitching. <laughs> like, oh, here's some patterns here and, you know, and then... I think in Christmas of 2022 is when you gave me my first kit, I believe. Yeah. And I know I kept being like, just let me know if you want to learn how to stitch. Yeah. Yeah. Let and me know. That was a gift in <laughs> itself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so both of the Kendall's stitch and I thought it'd be really fun to just kind of talk to them, especially, you know, uh, they're, they're part of the younger generation, the younger generation of stitchers. And so like, um, I've been stitching since I was like nine years old. And, um, you know, for those of you old school stitchers like me, we remember that there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of stuff out there. Unless you found it at your local craft store, you know, you weren't stitching it, right? So like, but you guys are lucky because you are stitchers in this kind of new generation where you can literally find anything. Mm -hmm. Like how, what do you... What do you like about that? Like, do you, is it easier for, easy for you to find patterns that you like? Like, is it just like overwhelming because there's so <laughs> many things? Like, yeah, I would say it's a little overwhelming sometimes, especially, I mostly just go to Etsy and um, just search what I want to stitch and find a pattern. But also it's been a lot easier since um, you're my mom and <laughs> you have all of the patterns and you know all of the um creative people in this space so I kind of have all of that at my fingertips <laughs> a little bit and you've also helped me find some of my favorite um designers um especially people on Etsy who I didn't know that I I already had downloaded their um patterns before I knew who they were witchy stitcher she's my favorite <laughs> um but yeah so it's pretty it's very easy now yeah yeah, yeah. Especially like, you know, when I was young, like there wasn't all the different types of fabric and floss. Mm -hmm. Like, again, you were really limited to what you could find at your local like Michael's or, or Joann's or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a I think there's actually a big resurgence in homebody crafting and the hobby mm -hmm. in general. Just about a few years ago, I would say as so many people my age posting about their like creations with cro crochet and then like knitting. And that's what I got into first. And then I, I just feel like I could relate more to other people my age. I could find lots of friends that could also do cross stitch with me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
do yeah. any of your friends cross stitch or have you tried to yes. recruit anybody? Yes, actually <laughs> one does, uh, my best friend Megan knows how to cross stitch, but um, I'm actually trying to finish a gift for her, but it's pretty big and did not do a good, <laughs> a good start, <laughs> but yeah. Well, that's awesome. And and you're a multi-crafter. Like you said, you um you crochet. Yeah, I crochet and knit. Um, it's probably like one other thing, but <laughs> mm. yeah. And you're a multi-crafter too. You love drawing. Yeah. You're into nail art these yes, days. I do my so. nails. And I did learn to knit during 2020. But then, I did not know that. Yeah, I needed a hat. It wasn't very good. Perfect. Um, but. During 2020, I, t I just watched YouTube videos and taught myself how to knit. Um, but then every pattern that I looked up was for crocheting and mm. not really knitting. Yeah. Um, I found knitting a lot easier, but I know most people say that crocheting is easier. Um, but yeah, I like to draw and color and coloring books and make candles and little clay crafts. I do all types of stuff. And so. you kind of mentioned like COVID. Do you think like, you know, having that time during COVID where you were on lockdown and you like could not do any other things? Like, do you think, do you feel like that contributed to your creative? Uh, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I like, I was able to, my mom actually knows how to knit from her mom. Uh, and so I just started getting back into it because what else could I do? I mean, right. What else was there yeah, to do? Right. So, yeah. Well, since we're here talking about cross stitch today, should we show some? Yes. Okay. So the girls brought their whips and they brought a couple of things that they finished. So we're just going to kind of share. And this was totally on the fly today. I just kind of <laughs> contacted them before they came over. I was like, hey, do you want to make a video? And they're like, okay. <laughs> they're being great sports. They're being great sports. So um, Kendall, why don't you start? Yeah. So I just brought one. Uh, most of my finishes are usually gifts for my friends, so I don't have them to show. But this one um, was my most recent finish, Nightmare Before Coffee, and I love it. And you helped me finish it and put it in the frame. And, and that is a the... witchy stitcher pattern. Yes, so. it is. My <laughs> Speaking <fave>. of. <laughs> yes, so um, yeah, I love this one. I put it by my like coffee station and everything. So. And you keep it out all year? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It, it's it's really always great. a nightmare before I have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I know it's going to be hard for you to show things because you have your hands yeah. full. <laughs> you want, you can put her down it. if you want. We could put the girls down. Yeah. You can get down. <laughs> Poor girl. It's okay. She always likes me. They'll survive. <laughs> uh, so I made, honestly, this is embarrassing, but I've only done two finishes, like complete finishes. Um, do you want to show this one first? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so one is actually on my wall. And and you mm. designed this. Yeah, I did design it. She designed this. Actually, I have another one of your finishes think, up here. I'm going to have to grab it. Um, but you designed this and gave this to me shortly after I taught you how to stitch. Yeah. I think it's another pro to be able to stitch in this era and like having access to the internet and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so she it says life is better with daisies because of course my dog is Daisy, and uh, she gave that to me for Mother's Day a couple years ago. I, did, yeah. I was shocked. I had just taught this girl how to stitch, and she's like already designing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. And do you want to show that? Yes, this is actually my very first pattern <gasps> that you ever gave me, and I oh. it's oh love at first dunk. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Look how cute that is. That is <laughs> What's cuter than milk and cookies? I know. And then you gave me another one for Christmas. Oh, can you reach that, that mm -hmm. little pillow there? Sorry. Thank you. Here, I'm going to hand that back to you. And Kendall actually gave this to me for Christmas. I showed this on my video. If you're happy <laughs> and you know it, wag your tail. And of course, there's Daisy in a sweater. <laughs> um, so now that I have Lily, I'm going to need some yeah. Lily stitches. Yeah. You know what to expect now. <laughs> <laughs> right? So if you can't find a pattern, you're just going to have to design one. That's right. No yeah. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> All right, girls. Do you want to show your whips, what yes. you're working on? So... Um, this one I started a few months ago and I've kind of fizzled out on it like as of late, but it is a, um, gift for my boyfriend who I assume will probably not be watching this video. Do you have the, the picture of the pattern? I have it on my phone. Yeah. Okay. Do you so, want to show this? Yeah, we can show that and you'll have to send me the picture oh, okay. so that I can, um, put it in here. Okay. And that way you can see what it's going to look like. Um, 
but tell us about it a little bit. So he's a little bit, he's in the westerns, he's a little bit country-ish, and uh, it's just two horses like in the sunset, and it's gonna be, you know, you'll see, it's gonna be a whole big thing, and um, I've been telling him I wanted to make him a cross-stitch project, so uh, I'm working on that one. It's just taking a little it. bit of time. It but, totally um, reminds me of the Barbie movie, where Ken like redecorated her house into yeah, this casa, yeah. Do mojo, mojo dojo, dojo casa, casa house. That, he that. absolutely has a mojo <laughs> dojo casa house. Okay, and I'm then he needs a little that. Barbie uh, <laughs> into his life. Yes. So send me that picture so I can put it up and share about yes, what that's gonna look like. I will. And then um, this one I started four maybe five years ago. Um, it was right when I first got back into cross stitching again. And, um, but there's not a cover photo, right? It's just the pattern. Yes. Okay. Should I not can't show, show that. that. No, okay. but you know what? You've got enough of the design done so that people can tell what it is. Yeah. So, so this is that. from, um, Spirited Away, the Studio Ghibli movie. Um, it's, um, Ch Chihiro and Haku the dragon. And this is one of my favorite movies ever. And, um, I think this will be really pretty once I finish it and hang it up, but you're getting so close. I know. I know. It's an insane I've been working on the head part it's for a long huge. time. It's, it's really giant. And so, it's full coverage. Yeah. It's taken me a very long time. Um, but it's so cute. I'm still working on it, but it's going to be one of the best ones when I finish it. And it's something I've been working on myself for so long. So that's awesome. Yeah, it is very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> What do you, what have you got, Kendall? Um, well, I actually have seven other... Let's do stuff, it. But, I mean... Bring it. No, that's the thing, though. I haven't really entirely, like... It's barely 2% completed. Um, but girl. I can show the... <laughs> we want to see it. We uh, want to see it. Well, okay. Uh, I'll start with this one. This is... No! This took me a long time. This is one of the, also one of the first <sighs> patterns that I was gifted, and my boyfriend and I gave picked it, it up. Yeah. And it was huge. And it's huge. It's huge, yeah. <laughs> Took me a couple of weeks to even get to this point. We, but we can't show the pattern. Ah, but yeah. it's a lucky cat. You guys know what the lucky cat looks like. But let's show what you've got. Let's show your stitching. Yeah, so you know what a Just lucky a cat looks it, like. So yeah. yeah, it's so cute. But yeah, it's going to be, be huge. Giant. Yeah. And again, you girls are doing the like full coverage stuff. Yeah. Yep. Woo. And now what have you got? another pattern that you gave me that it was, it's oh. four of these and I'm doing the snail one right yes, now. Yes, it was one of the oh, Lindy cute. Stitches, um, uh, the, like the spring snapshots. Mm -hmm. I can put a picture in. So this is like the, um, the snail. Is it a snail? Slug? Snail? I'd, I'd say snail, yeah. It's cute. so cute. <laughs> I'll put a little picture in. <laughs> Very cute. And then, well, I don't know if Mr. Lehman... Uh, he does not watch my videos, <laughs> so you're good. <laughs> you're right, good. So I was going to do this for Christmas as well, but I could not finish it. I was way too overambitious for that. But uh, I wanted to cross-stitch his university logo that he went to. and That's this is, cool. And I designed so, it so he went to Ryder University, so... And you designed this? Well, I mean, I copied the logo, but sure. I had to find the, create the pattern myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great start. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Very nice. Did you want to show any of your other things or? Uh, the other, one, the only one that actually has like a figure in it, and it's not like just a block of cross stitches, <laughs> is this oh. one. And oh, how it's cute! Full of San uh, Sanrio characters like Hello Kitty and My Melody. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but. A lot of work. And you have to show me the pattern. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and send me the pattern picture, too, so I can put it in so everybody can see what it will look like oh, when you're done. But that's, that's so cute. So I love it. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So let me ask you. That was everything you wanted to show? I guess so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to interrupt you. So let me ask you, girls, like, what do you like most about cross-stitching? Mm, I mean, clearly you like it, but. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and I feel like. For me, just the act of doing it is, I can't meditate um, because I can't sit still for that long, but it's something I can kind of do. I'm doing it with my hands and I'm not just staring at a screen, which I do all day for work. So then when I come home, I can turn something on the TV and then just focus on my cross stitch and I'm working towards something. And especially when it's a gift for somebody, you put so much time and like effort into it. And so it just feels more like 
there's just so there's you just put your soul into that uh and gift, you do so. stitch a lot of gifts for people mm -hmm. yeah fact, maybe i'll send you some pictures to put in that'd be great in yeah. fact she recently stitched um a friend of yours had asked if you would stitch um uh her childhood home right yeah it was her grandma's um home that she did live in as well um and, and you didn't have a pattern for that mm -hmm. no she stitched it from a photograph <laughs> <laughs> You, you need to send me the picture of that one because it was amazing. I will. And wasn't it your first time stitching on linen as well? My first time stitching on linen and I've never um, designed my own pattern before and I kind of just took the picture she sent me and thankfully her her grandma's house was pretty linear um, but I just put like a grid over it and kind of just went uh, went with it. But yeah, she, choosing your own colors and everything. Yeah, she gifted it to her grandma and um, her grandma was very happy she said and um we traded and I got a tattoo. So <laughs> I, I, Good I trace. forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crazy. I'm just like amazed by you girls though. Cause like I've been stitching for years and years and years. I have never designed my own cross stitch. I've never stitched something off of a picture. So <laughs> I'm very impressed. Uh, but I didn't let you answer that question. Like, what do you like about cross stitch? Um, one is the fulfilling, the sense of fulfillment from it. Just when I even finished that little um, cookies and milk pattern, I felt really, I mm -hmm. just wanted to start another one after that. Um, I know the feeling. Mm -hmm. And another one, I guess, <laughs> is um, I, an actual, I didn't know there was a big community within the cross stitch. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, I can, one, I can also just teach other people. I've been also like getting my friend back into it and I've been able to relate with her about that. Um, and also just being able to talk about it with you guys, you know, yeah. and I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I have another daughter named Maggie. She stitches as well. She, she lives in New York right now, but when she comes back for a visit, we'll have to uh, get together again and, um, show some of her stuff. But, and it's fun too, whenever I come over and especially when Maggie's in town, we all just sit in the living room and stitch together. So we're hanging out, but we're also I stitching. love it. <laughs> I love it. It's my happy place when mm -hmm. my girls are here and we stitch. I always have to share you with my son, though, so. <laughs> True. He kind of wants her to spend time with him and not me. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> All right, girls. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to chat with me and my friends about your stitching and show us your stitching. And, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. To You're welcome. Thanks You're for welcome. having us on. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope everybody's having a great day out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>